So what we have to do, we have to um, simplify, we have to simplify or equify a big circuit in a smaller one. That's why this is called equivalent circuit. That means this is a simplification. Otherwise, we won't be able to, uh, what is that, um, analyze the circuit, okay? So normally, our circuit will come on hobby. Normally, our circuits will be like this. Okay, let, let me go at the end of our lecture. Let's say like this. Our, our uh, given circuit will be like this. This is a very small, very, very small power system. Two bus only. Bus one, this is bus, bus one, this is bus two. Two bus power system only, just only. This is un unimaginable because uh, this is not this is this is not real, because this small simplified small power system is not real. Okay, but for calculation and for understanding, that's why we are here. Normally, the power systems are very big, uh, 14 bus, 30 bus, 33 bus, uh, 100 bus, even even 200 bus even. Okay, so two bus power systems are not real, but these are studied for their uh, simplification and because they are easy to understand that's why they are given in the questions okay so we have we we are given with a circuit like this then we have to what we have to expand or we have to use the equivalent component here this is the transformer and this is the equivalent circuit of the transformer this is the transmission line so we have to replace that with the equivalent circuit of the transmission line then we have another transformer. We have to give the equivalent circuit of the transformer. Then we have a generator. We have to give the equivalent circuit of the generator. Then we have a load, equivalent circuit of the load. So this is, this is the detailed equivalent circuit of, detailed equivalent circuit of our um, power system or a one line diagram. This is called a one line diagram. Remember this one line diagram. Sometimes it is called OLD one line diagram or sometimes it is called single line diagram this diagram is called one line diagram or single line diagram one o any one that is one line okay so we have to convert this one line diagram to our equivalent circuit then what then we have to simplify this by neglecting the core loss of the transformer then we can further in simplify this, simplify this, simplify this, simplify this, and we can get something like this. Okay, so we can get something like this. This, this diagram is called simplified impedance diagram. This diagram is called reactance diagram. What? Reactance diagram, remember this, reactance. So finally, we started from here. See, we started from here, then we go, we have gone there. Then we uh, ignore some of it. We ignore some of it. We ignore some of it. We ignore some of it. Then finally we got simplified impedance diagram. Then we got final reactance diagram. This is our most simplified position. Got it everyone? So I will show you how we have done that, but you have got it, right? Hello? Hello. No, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now this is one another single line diagram. Again, we have to convert these to our what? Detailed equivalent circuit. Detailed. I said detailed. Detailed means everything we have to mention. Detailed equivalent circuit. Then we have to uh, neglect some of it. We have to got the re, uh, impedance diagram. Then we have to got reactance diagram. So three things you have to do. Three things you have to do. Number one. Detail equivalent circuit, impedance diagram, reactance diagram. So why this is called impedance diagram? Why this is called uh, reactance diagram? Because here you can see there are some resistance, right? And some inductance. Re resistance and inductance both become impedance, right? What is impedance? What is impedance? Impedance is Z, right? Z is equal to what? R plus J. Jx, right? That is called impedance. 
what is reactance reactance is only x, x right x. reactance is yes, only sir. x understood that means when yes, your sir. when your z is equal to only x you can call it what reactance diagram understood yes sir so, simplified equivalent circuit this is simplified impedance diagram this is simplified reactor you, can, you do not have to say simplified this is just reactance diagram but my point okay. yes sir. okay you may not know you may not know how to go from here to here but that's okay because i haven't teach you that yet just we have just seen some uh, equivalency again equivalent circuit like this okay again from here to here then here then here yeah this is the final impedance diagram reactance diagram not impedance reactance diagram again this this is a three bus system you have to do 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 then you have to stop here okay there are a few examples are here you can practice i'm going to give these uh, okay did i did i give these um, notes to your classroom okay let me check No, didn't, right? I didn't. Okay, I will give today. Okay? So let's start from the beginning. At first, equivalent circuit of a synchronous generator, alternator, or motor. Okay? At first, we have to know what is the equivalent circuit of synchronous generator, that means alternator, or motor. So the equivalent circuit of a um, generator or a motor is like something like this. Okay. So you will have a voltage source EG. EG is generated EMF at no load due to the field excitation. This uh, field excitation. This is your EG. Then you have a XAR. This one. What is this? reactance due to armature reaction known as friction fictitious fictitious reaction reactance right but my point you know it armature reaction you know it right reactance due to armature reaction this is yes, ar armature reaction ar xar xl the reactance due to the leakage flux known as leakage reactance okay leakage leakage reactance yes, right yes. Okay, okay, I am suffering from cold, so that's why uh, you might find my some of my pronunciation are uh, what is that? Okay, so um, this is due to the leakage reactance or um, leakage flux known as leakage reactance or or Portier react, uh, reactors, right? Now, uh, RA, this one is the resistance, the resistance. Due to the armature windings, armature windings known as armature resistance. Now VT, VT is the th terminal voltage, this one, terminal voltage of the generator. VS, VS is the supply generator, supply voltage of the generator. That means this is a motor. Because if this is at that side, that means this is a motor. So you are giving some current here. And VS is the supply from the generator. And it is going to the motor. EMF. Uh, EM, EM is the back EMF. Motor always have a back EMF, right? EM is the back EMF. Actually, this is the voltage of the motor. Finally, in simple word, this is the voltage of the motor. Understood? Okay. So you just remember these. Okay, you have a R, you have a XAR, you have a XL. Okay? And you have a EG. So I will explain what these are needed, why they are needed. And what are these? Now, if I told you to simplify this, if I have told you simplify this, then what would you have done? You could add these two, right? Because they are series. Can you add these two? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. You can add these two and call it XS. XS, XS is equal to XAR plus AXL. RA, 
Again, you can add this to called excess, right? Finally, finally, you can write like this. For synchronous impedance, Zs is equal to what? Ra plus Jx, Jxs, right? This is the simplified function, uh, simplified uh, or synchronous impedance, simplified one. And if I ignore the resistance, if I ignore the resistance, so what, what it, it will be? It will be reactance diagram, right? This is the impedance diagram. This is the reactance diagram. Understood everyone? Yes, sir. Okay. This is for motor. Sir. This is for generator. This is for motor. One generator. This is one motor. Okay. Now the transformer. Hey, hello. Sir, RGS is here. Sir, it's upper slide. Sir, RS is jitter, sir. It's like, sir, you can RA jitter, sir, sir. इलेक्ट्रिकल एनार्जी फ्रम वन सार्किट टू एनदार सार्किट उट चेजिंग दिक्वेंसि दैट मीन दिस इज एन मैगनेटिकल डिवाइस मैगनेटिक डिवाइस Magnetically, this will transform energy from one circuit to another circuit without changing the frequency and without reducing or increasing the power. Okay, understood? You already know what is transformer, right? Yes. Okay. Now there, the these are the feature of the transformer. You read it by yourself. Okay, this is for yourself study. You can read it by yourself. I can ask you what are the feature of the transformer in the question, but. You can read it by yourself. This is pretty self-explanatory. You can read by yourself. Now the main components of the transformer: the magnetic core, primary and secondary winding, insulation of the winding, lead, and tapping of for the coil and with their support terminals and the uh, terminal insulators, tank, oil, cooling arrangement, etc. Now here are the applications of transformer: step up, step down, electrical isolation, impedance matching. Link between AC and DC system, instrument extension, a lot of things. Classification of transformer based on number of phases: single phase transformer, three phase transformer. Based on relative position: core type transformer, shell type transformer. You already know. Based on number of windings per phase: one winding per phase, two windings per phase, three windings per phase. Based on the volt ampere and voltage rating: low voltage transformer. Judy, if it is less than 1.1 kilovolt, medium volt transformer. If it is more than 1.1 kilovolt and less than 11 kilovolt, high voltage transformer (VHV). If it is more than 11 kilovolt, high voltage transformer. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. The transformer you use in your lab, those are all low voltage transformer. Okay. We already know this. Okay, we already know it. These are these are pretty simple things. So these are all from your machine course, right? And you read it by yourself. I'm not going to go through all of these. Okay, now here, this one, this one you may know or may not know. Current or series transformer, CT. You know it, CT. Yes. Current transformer for measuring the current. Okay, used to measure the current in yes. high current. is a circuit with low range ampli ammeter that means let's say you have an ammeter right that ammeter can measure up to 30 ampere how much 30 ampere 30 ampere now if you have a line power line there 1000 ampere of current is going or or around 1000 or 900 or 800 ampere how can you measure that Huge current with your low range ammeter. Can you measure it? You cannot measure that huge current with your small low range ammeter, right? You cannot. But there is a way of doing that. That way is using a transformer, current transformer. If you use a current transformer in that line, that the current will step down, step down, step down to Less than 30 ampere. That time you can measure the current and you can multiply that result with that factor, right? Understood? Yes, sir. So step up the voltage, step down the current. Has the primary 
coil with one or more turns of uh, thick wire connected in C. Okay, you can read it by yourself. Okay, here, normally the current ratios are 100 is to 5. 100 is to 5. That means 100 ampere current becomes how much? 5 ampere. 100 ampere of current become how much? 5 mm -hmm. ampere. So if you measure 4.5, so how much? What, what 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 is the what is the ratio here? Twenty, right? Twenty times. So if you have a hundred ampere current that is going through this wire, now using a current transformer, you can reduce it to five ampere. Understood? Now you can measure it using any what? Using any ammeter. Now after measuring your uh, what is that? Uh, after measuring your um, current with your ammeter you got 4.5 ampere of current, right? In your ammeter, in your ammeter, you got 4.5. But it is what? It is 20 times less, right? So you have to multiply that with 20. So that will be your final result. So this is the, uh, this is the work of current transformer. You can read it by yourself. This is a current transformer things. This is this one, current transformer. So this is, um, have you ever seen clamp meter clamped this meter have you ever seen yes, this meter sir got to see mr clamp meter clamp meter clamp meter there there is a current transformer inside okay there is a current transformer inside so it, it measures the current by holding it right so this is exactly what uh, current transformer does this one this is a clamp See, clamp type and clip on type. This one is what? This one is a clip on maybe? This one is a clamp. Understood? So, yes, so you read it by yourself. I'm not going to go through it. I have to finish the equivalent circuit. Okay? Now the equivalent circuit of the transformer. This one is important. Now here, a transformer is drawn like this. A transformer is drawn like this, right? And this is what you have here, an equivalent circuit. Because transformer has various resistance and reactors. Number one is R1. Number two is XL1. Number two is RC, XM. Here in the secondary side, you have XL2, R2. And the voltages are E1 and E2. Finally, your voltage is V1 and V2. Okay, let's say, uh, let's cl uh, clear this thing up and see what does it mean. X1, XL1, I1, V1, E1. These are your primary side resistance, leakage reactance, current, voltage, and counter. Counter EMF. Counter EMF is back, back EMF. This is, this is called self-induced yeah, self EMF, respectively. R2, XL2, I2, V2, E2. These are your secondary side re resistance, leakage reactance, current, voltage, and counter EMF, respectively. RC or R0 or RM, whatever you say. RC equal to R0 or RM. XM or X0 is called core resistance. Core. Core loss resistance. This is called core loss resistance. Mutual impedance. This one is called mutual impedance. Mutual. Remember, this one, this thing you will hear a lot of time. You will hear, you not hear, you will hear a lot of time. This thing you will hear a lot of time. Mutual impedance, uh, mutual inductance, or mutual impedance. Impedance, mutual. Sir, yeah. Mutual inductance, sir. M, D, A, Prakash Karan, sir. M, M, M. M, M, D, A, Prakash Karan, M. Mutual. Mutual impedance or mutual inductance, whatever you say. This mutual word, you will learn a lot of things. Mutual means, basically, uh, these are actually shared, okay, in both yes, sides. So, in one side, you have to show it, in primary side. Now, here, IO, I mu, or IC, or, and IW, these are actually low, no load current, magnetizing current, and working or core loss current, respectively. Now, let's go back. So, what do you have to do? What do you have to understand from here? In place of a transformer, you have to write this, okay? In place of... Okay, so you have to write this. 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 Okay, so you have to write this.
सिंप्लीफाइड डायग्राम में तो माके जस्ट एक ट्रांसफॉर्मर जगह ये टाइम्स करता होगा यू हैव टू यूज़ दिस होल सर्किट इन प्लेस ऑफ़ द ट्रांसफॉर्मर ओके यस नाउ द इम्पीडेंस डायग्राम फ्रॉम द ट्रांसफॉर्मर द इम्पीडेंस डायग्राम क्या मन होगे सो यू हैव टू डू व्हाट इम्पीडेंस इम्पीडेंस you can actually add this to add you can connect them okay you can connect them like this so you have what you have r1 r1 xl1 xl1 you have rc here rc you have xm you have xm you have xl2 you have xl2 you have r2 you have r2 and anything else nothing so that's why it is called mutual because they are shared in both side got my point Mr. Sir, yes, sir. yes. Sir. Now, now the neglect the core loss. If you neglect the core loss, that means your RC, because your RC is very large, because your RC is very large. So that that means your IC and IW is very very small. So we can neglect it, right? We can consider this as an open circuit. So we will neglect that. So you have only what XM, right? Neglecting the core loss. So we neglect. Then what? The reactance diagram. Assuming X M is very large, this X M is also very large. If we assume it, what will happen? This will be open circuit, right? Now what we have? X L one, X L two, R one, R two, right? Only these four. So R one, X L one, X L two, R two. Finally. Finally, what do you have? Finally, what do you have? Finally, you have RT. That is what we R1 and R2. XT is equal to what? X1 and XL2. XL and XL2, right? Remember, these two will be added and will become XT. These two will be added and will become RT. So this is your simplified impedance diagram. Now, if you ignore the resistance, what do you have? Only reactance, sir. Simp simplified reactance diagram or only reactance diagram. So this is what we have to go. What we have to find out. Do you know why? Why we are simplifying the whole thing to this? Do you know? Because all of our math in our future, all of our math will be in reactance. Got my point? All of our math. Our total math is all math. We look at. We have to reactance. Be careful. That's why you have to convert a convert a big circuit to a smaller one. Understood? Yes, oh, sir. Okay. Hello. Hello. Sir, this is a simplified diagram. Sir, we can sir ask you what is sir. What is it? शब्द कर Now this one is high voltage or high tension side impedance, referred to low voltage and low tension side impedance. This is our power unit calculation. This is our whole power unit calculation. We will do it later. That means in our next class, not now. So you do not have to worry about this. Let's go for the calculation. Not not this one. Not this one. Not this one. Yeah, transmission line. Representation of transmission line. So you have transmission line of three types. Number one, short transmission line that is less than 80. Medium transmission line that is more than 80 kilometer to 250 kilometer, and long transmission line which is more than 250 kilometer. Understood? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Now transmission line can be uh, simply, sim simply represented by what? And R and N what L, L. reactance right and yes, and, and and resistance and a reactance so this is your total impedance so now 
shunt conductance or admittance this is not conductance this is admittance actually conductance is not a good not a good word admittance is a good word admittance what is admittance admittance is the conductivity of that line the okay now reactance yeah Resident now impedance. now if your transmission line is uh, medium or long you have to represent your transmission line using pi model or t model pi model or t model what is a pi model pi model is this one so you have a r you have an x then you have what you have your half admittance half admittance and a half susceptance half susceptance admittance is the opposite of reactance susceptance is the opposite of impedance um, I, 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 I made a mistake. Admittance is the opposite of what? Opposite of resistance. Susceptance is the opposite of reactance. Both of them will become Y. Y is the what? Y is the admittance. Okay. Finally, Y is called admittance. You can call it. So here you have what? You have resistance. You have uh, capacitance, resistance, capacitance. These are actually called what? These are actually called? Admittance. Uh, admittance. Why it to finally actually call admittance? Now this is your t pi model. What is a pi model? Pi model is something like this. Pi model is something like this. Understood? In your series, you have your main component, and in your parallel, you will have your other component. Now this is called pi model. This is, no, no, this is called pi model. Pi model. You last year. If you have in your VLSI, if you are 11th semester, you will you will learn about pi model and T model as well. In VLSI, you will see normally the wire or cables, cables, understood, right? Cables, cables are analyzed. Cables are analyzed using T model or pi model. Okay. So transmission line is also a cable, right? Is also a cable. Cable has resistance. Cable has capacitance. Cable has inductance. All of those you have to represent in your circuit. Let me both about our cable and resistance koto. Na, no. There are resistances in your cable, right? If there are resistances in your cable, and if the cable is long enough, if the cable is long enough, then you have to you have to what? You have to add, uh, address them or you have to analyze them using a model. This model is called pi model or T model, sometimes it is called L model. So L model is not important. L model is not good enough to, for analyzing. Pi model is very popular. T model is very popular. Pi model means you will have a component here. You will have a component here and you will have your main component here. See, the main component is here and you have something here and something here. That's why it is called pi model. What is T model? T model is here you will have something, here you will have something, at the middle you will have something, right? Yes, sir. Okay, let's take a one minute break or two minute break, okay? Okay, sir. So, what you have to do, we have to, uh, what you have to see, that is, how the components are divided into pi model and T model. See, in your transmission line, you have one R and you have one X. In your pi model, they are used in one place only. That means that is at the middle. So the whole of the, all of them will be there. So R and X. But this part is twice. This thing you have to write twice. Right? So that's why you have to divide yes. them. So you have to divide the whole G and whole B by two. So your G by 2 will be here, B by 2 will be here. Your G by 2 will be here, B by 2 will be here. So that means your Y by 2, this is your Y by 2, this is your Y by 2. Okay? In your next case, you see, in the T model, you have to use your main component twice. Main component means main resistance and uh, reactance twice, right? So you have to divide the R by 2, X by 2, R by 2, X by 2. Understood? This thing is divided into two parts because they are used in twice. They are used twice, right? This thing is divided twice. 
they divided by two that means they are used in two uh, in two places understood but this one yes, is used once only once since they have been used once so g will be g b will be b so the total is y understood so this is how your t model and pi model are seen so in your question i might i might say use pi model for transmission line or use t model for transmission line understood i can ask okay now this is the long transmission line it is more than 250 km this is the long transmission line i'm not going to go through all of it not needed so equivalent pi model or pi circuit for long transmission line you have already seen pi model means what this one is z this one is y by 2 this one is y by 2 okay this is the pi model right you have a z that means r plus x or jx whatever you say and this one is what this one is uh, the y by 2 this one is y by 2 so three things one is this one another one is this one another one is this one so so this is your pi model so both of the both of them are same thing just the slightly value difference are there so now one line diagram or single line diagram that means old or sld the things i have already told you the one line diagram or single line diagram is a simplified notation for representing not representing representing a three phase power system that means a three phase power system will be represented by an one line diagram this one will be n not a this one will be n and one line diagram or a single line diagram one line means three phase remember one line means three phase it can be single phase as well the simplified diagram of an electrical system is called one line or single line diagram i can ask you what is one line diagram okay the purpose of the one line diagram is to supply in concise form the significant information about the power system that means a lot of things are represented in one line diagram in a simplified or a concise form concise means simplified concise what means simplified man choto kore dekhano hobe mane boro ekta jinish ke choto kore tomake uposthapon korano hobe miniature okay that is called one line diagram so you can read it by yourself now why one line diagram the power systems are extremely complicated extremely geographically spread system and three phase system they are actually they are actually what these are actually simplified and present represented in a single line diagram by watching that you can actually understand okay what what is there what is there what is there how far or where, where is your transformer where where is your circuit breaker where is your fault where is your generator where is your motor how many generator do you have you can look at your one line diagram and you can have a guess understand okay now what are the symbols and apparatus so you have to know what which one is which the round thing that means the circle is a machine or rotatory armature circle is a machine that means generator or motor okay generator or motor so how do you know it is, it is generator or motor g and m okay mm -hmm. g will be written or m will be written understood okay this one is a circuit breaker this one is a what circuit breaker this one is a what can anyone say transformer, transformer. exactly this one is a what ar circuit breaker this one is a what this one is also a transformer what type of transformers this type of transformer two winding mm. primary yeah. and secondary okay two winding transformer this one is a transformer this one is also a transformer you have to know which one is which okay this one is a what this one is a three winding power transformer this one is a what this one is a delta connection delta connection this one is delta y connection this one is a fuse okay y connection okay understood okay let yes, me show sir. okay let me show you something i am going to stop the recording for a second pausing these are the apparatus symbols this one this one is a current transformer 
This one is a potential or voltage transformer. This one is a Y connection, three phase Y connection with neutral grounded. This one is grounded, this one is also grounded. This one, three phase Y connection, neutral is grounded through a, through a what? Through a reactor or through a resistance, okay? This is an ammeter, this is a voltmeter. Now, detailed impedance diagram. Detailed impedance diagram, let's do an example. This one is a very simple example, two bus system. You have one generator, then you have a transformer. This one, this one is a delta Y transformer. This one is a, you, you have a transmission line, you have a motor and you have a load, right? For generator, you have to use what? You have to use these, right? Remember generator? Resistance, a, a resistance reactance and EG1, okay? Then for transformer, T model. This is a T model, right? This is T model, right? Yes, resistance, sir. reactance, resistance, reactance, and at the middle you have Y, right? So this is your T model. Then what? Then you have a trans, uh, transmission line. Then you have a what? Transmission line. Transmission line is, this is the pi model, right? Yes, sir. Why pi model? Because they didn't mention anything. So that's why we have put pi model. Because this part and this part, they will be ignored eventually, right? If they are ignored, you have only one thing, one R, one X. That's why this is your transmission line. For motor, this is your motor, right? Like a, like a generator, you have reactance, you have resistance, and you have what? A circle. Now for normal load, the load can be resist. Okay, this is called RL load. That means you have a R, you have a what? You have an L. RL. Can you see that? Yes. So this is your simplified, no, detailed, not simplified. This is your detailed impedance diagram. Detailed impedance diagram. Now simplified impedance diagram. How? Ignore this. Ignore this. Ignore this. Okay? Then add this two. Add this two. Okay? So what do you have? Yes, sir. What do you yes. have? You have a generator here. You have a transmission uh, T1, that means your uh, transformer. Yes. Then you have TX line, that means yes. transmission line. Then you have a motor. Then you have a <laughs> load, right? Now, yes. in in, your, in this lecture, you do not have to put any value. You do not have to put any value. The value will be put, uh, the value you will be calculating in your next lecture that is called power unit calculation. Here, they will say, okay, simplify this and use the, draw the impedance diagram, right? After saying a lot of things, they said draw the impedance diagram. That means you have to draw the impedance diagram. So this is your impedance diagram. This is your impedance diagram. This is your impedance diagram. This is your reactance diagram. Here, can you see some values? Can you see the values? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. At first, you do not have to worry about value. The value will be added after this lecture, okay? So right now, no value. So this is your what? This is your simplified impedance diagram. What about reactance diagram? Can anyone guess? Ibrahim, Shwaib, Saidul? Yes, yes, sir. What about the impedance diagram, uh, reactance diagram? How can you convert this to reactance diagram? To so only use the reactance. Exactly. So resistance will be gone, right? Yeah. All the resistance will be gone and we'll have something like this. Got my point? Now here they have done one more thing that is they ignore the load, right? They also ignore the static load. They also ignore the static load. That means they ignore what? They ignore these and as well as they ignore these. Understood? So all resistances will be ignored. All static load. Static load means RL, RC load. Load will be ignored. The magnetizing current 
the magnetizing current of each transformer will be ignored all capacitance of the transmission line will be ignored so, so transmission line capacitance is, capacitance is already ignored if it was not ignored it will be ignored here okay got my point got it yes sir sir so, resistance na thakle sir reactance diagram sir হ্যাঁ রেজিস্ট্যান্স না থাকলে রিয়াক্টেন্স দেখা এবং তোমাকে ওই যে লোড গুলো বাদ দিতে হবে ইফ ইউ হ্যাভ লোডস লোডটাও বাদ দিতে হবে ওকে দিস ইজ ইয়োর রিয়াক্টেন্স ডায়াগ্রাম কট মাই পয়েন্ট ইয়েস স্যার ওকে লেটস ডু ওয়ান एग्जांपल অল অফ ইউ ডু দিস এট ইওর হোম ওকে অল অফ ইউ টেক এ স্ক্রিনশট You, you, you took the screenshot? Hello? Yes, yes sir. Okay. We take. Do not 